Welcome in everyone and welcome back. We're in the living room today, not the atrium, as you can tell by the beige nightmare world that is our temporary apartment wall. Welcome in! For those of you who are new here, the main star of the channel is usually Olo, but she's going without her communicator today since she usually communicates with my voice. You're so cute. Aw, thanks. I don't deserve that. <laughs> Can't. Uh oh. Ugh. Take the compliment. Thank you. Yes, you do. Welcome in. Olo is so cute in y'all. Olo is cute. Definitely. 100%. Big Olo stands in this house. <laughs> Where the normal you? The normal me is everywhere. Ah, what a pet. I want to sit on the other side of, of Olo in my little Sylveon form. That's be so cute. I do want to. I mean, I understand. I understood. My brain auto-corrected in my brain. But not out loud. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone. Today is going to be me talking about our time in Japan. Hey, Reko. Welcome in. How's it going? We're going to wait a couple of minutes before we start, though. Just give time for people to talk. I thought this was chaos. My bad. Yeah, is that you? It is me. It's going to be me today. Olo's going to take a nice little sit here and just kind of hang out. Because uh, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. And a lot of it involved food, which she cannot eat because she does not have a mouth. And she photosynthesizes. Yeah, here Lily is under the moniker Sunny because she is the voice of Sunny the Atrium AI. And uh, Sunny borrows Chaos Lily's uh, body from time to time. Well, welcome in, everyone. It's good to see your faces here. I've missed everyone oh so terribly, and so has Olo, of course. It's been a few months since we were able to talk to everyone because of the move. Japan and food is an interesting relationship on so many levels. Oh, so many levels. There's too many levels and a lot of them are sus. <laughs> Humans are weird, folks. Humans are weird. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not crying. You're crying. I missed you so much. We missed you too. What was the strangest Japanese cuisine you put in your mouth? I don't know about strangest. Um, the one that I tried that I wasn't expecting to eat because, you know, I had the list of things you have to try uh, was fried lotus root. That was really good. It was kind of like um, kind of like a fried potato kind of texture. It had a kind of bamboo flavor. If any of you can like bamboo and soups and stuff. Mmm, sounds tasty. It was. It was tasty. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of um, adventurous foods I would eat because I do not like fish. I grew up in a desert and unfortunately a lot of Japanese cuisine is fish related. Especially some of the weirder flavors. No fishies? Not for ham. That would be sacrilege. <laughs> but yeah um there's uh this thing called uh okonomiyaki which is like a um fried noodle pancake thing that was really good and uh then it was really bad because <laughs> i um i might have like celiac disease or something come to find out and that was a trigger oh it was so bad veggie sushi no we didn't we weren't able to find a place that had the veggie sushi um as a prominent feature but that would have been good to try there is this place here in the united states that Mondi wants to take us to called cowgirl sushi that is a vegan sushi restaurant and that's like all they do 
he will not stop talking about that place. So we're definitely going to take a trip down there probably while we're in the second nomadic phase. Because if you don't know, this is um, the space we're in now is a temporary thing until like the end of summer and then we'll be moving again. So we'll be on the run again here a little bit later. But let me start some music. By the way, Olo's new album should be out on everywhere that has music today. So we're going to be listening to that in the background. We had a place called uh, Veggie Heaven where they made meat and shrimp out of soy. Neat. Okay, so we'll get that started. And we'll get started on our slideshow! I guess first, do you... Do you guys want me to answer questions first? Because I could do that. I know that uh, King, our friend King, the Failing King, the wonderful Failing King, uh, had asked what was my favorite experience. And I'll get to that during the slideshow. But if you have anything other than what was your favorite experience, uh, I will definitely answer that. Immediately sticking it on my iTunes, yes. Yeah, but... Let me see. Well, I'm waiting for questions to come in. Let me go ahead and... What was the prettiest thing you saw while you were in Japan? There was this really cool jellyfish place that I'll show you guys. That was really cool. Um like a cereal wise uh as far as natural beauty there uh were a lot of locations there were too many to pick one what was it like in japan in general exactly like it is in america actually <laughs> whenever you live in a place long enough it just kind of becomes a place there's some cultural differences of course um but after you get used to the swing of things, it just kind of becomes, a, you know, the same as everything else. Uh, did you go to the fox island? No, I did not go to any of the animal based islands that have like the rabbits or the foxes or the cats. But I did go to an owl cafe and that will be shown here shortly. Uh, did I attend any conventions? No, because I am agoraphobic. <laughs> That's like a... Uh, Taking out my trash was a, uh, a chore in Japan, uh, just because of how freaking scared I was of the outside for a really long time. Like going on trips, oddly enough, were not triggering, but live existing in daily life was like hard for some reason. I didn't want the neighbors seeing me take out the trash or like going like I had to force myself to go to the konbini down the down the street just to get like, you know, societal interaction. <laughs> Did you lick anything fun? Um, does ice cream count? Cause I have some fun ice creams and I do have some pictures. That question was purely for Lily. I could guess. I'm gonna lick why I play Helldivers, heck yeah! For democracy, get him! <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Ice cream is pretty fun? Yeah, it can be. Ice cream can be pretty fun. Let me do a quick round of shout outs and then we'll get into the uh, the presentation. And of course, feel free to ask me questions if you guys have any. <gasps> I see Mando lurking around in here. Oh, heck yeah. It's been forever since I talked to a lot of these people in here because of the move. And I'm finally on time zones that, uh... That correlates with a lot of people. Alright, let me pause the music and we'll get started with these shoutouts. Your voice has been greatly missed. Thank you for the spoons. Thank you for being so patient and kind. How many languages uh, do you know and what are they? So I only know one proficiently and I know two, uh in a way that I can get by if I'm lost. And that is Spanish, but it's like uh, New Mexico Spanish, Southern New Mexico Spanish. And 
Uh, it has been called filthy by people who are native to Mexico. Um, the dialect is not universal and is looked down upon. So I don't know if I could count that one. Uh, and then I know enough Japanese to ask where things are uh, and to be polite. Captain, there are no kangaroos up here. But we're down on the ground, Nat. There could definitely be kangaroos there. Just saying. Does James stream? I'm gonna shout him out just in case. No king clip, I know. I see Amanda lurking, so we're definitely gonna give them a shout out. I can't stop. I can't stop fucking laughing at what I just saw, dude. <laughs> You saw him slide out of the car. This game is awesome. <laughs> can someone clip that, please? I need that clip. That's so good, Pops. If you can clip that, please. <laughs> Jax. This is epic. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't even realize. Right on. Cement saw plus the saw blade. Uh, da 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 Let's see. And then, of course, we got to shout out Mel. I think that will cover everyone. And I hope that I typed that in right. I did! Alex, to get me straight, you're a dispatcher at a trucking company. You don't know the hours of service? That doesn't oh, sound accurate. Work at a grocery store, it's ass. Aw. I'm sorry, man. Hey, mine's not much better. I'm a manager of a dollar store. I need to disable it. I thought yeah, I disabled that. On, she came from a school bus company. I need a moment. I need a mic. I need a moment. <laughs> Off. There we go. Surprise Pango in the background. Okay, let me go through real quick, make sure I didn't miss any questions in my shout out uh, streams. SVG, it's really great to see you. Thank you for being here. And yes, it is time to start anew. Um, did you know in Australia they actually eat kangaroos, but specifically ones they farm for? Yes, I did. Uh, they actually sell kangaroo meat in America in select places too. Um, I know there's this place, I think it's in Seattle that sells like every kind of exotic meat and they do offer kangaroo there too. Thank you. No problem, Mando. Thank you for being here. Hope you have a nice chill time. Okay. Uh, let's start the music again and we'll get into it. So the place I lived in in Japan is Okinawa. And Okinawa is like the Hawaii of Japan, is kind of what they liken it to. It's a tropical island way down south of the mainland. And I'll get a map out here in a second. Uh, so there are quite, um, there are some cultural stuff there from the past um, that is unique to the island. The original inhabitants were the Ryuku people. And, uh, they're, they still live on the islands, and some of them want independence from Japan. Uh, they've had a long history of colonization. Unfortunately, they were under control of China for a while. Uh, they got independence, and then I think they went back into control by someone else like pretty soon after. Uh, 
So there are schools there that teach the traditional language um, and culture. They're trying to uh, reconnect with their roots. Uh, but right now they are a part of Japan. They're considered a prefecture and uh, kind of like a county, I guess, in American terms. But like if counties were whole states. <laughs> Uh, so let's get into it. So the picture that I have here is of the Shiza lion, uh, and Shizas are huge in Okinawa. There's um, just Shizas freaking everywhere. It's one of the like touristy things too. It's so much a symbol that you'll find them pretty much in any shop you go to. Hbg went Kratos when she noticed your return. I've never seen her like that. Uh, send you greetings. Oh, thank you. Cheesy. I like cheese. Uh, I've never seen her like that before. Send you greetings. Nope. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for being here, Carlos. Cheesy lines? Yes. <laughs> so she's used their, um, a symbol of protection. And so they'll usually be at the front of houses or businesses guarding the front gate and so on like that. Uh, to ward off evil from entering. Yes, Chaos and SBG and a few people are on the same <laughs> wavelength today. Okay, so this is Okinawa. Uh, it's this little tiny island here off of mainland. So uh, here's mainland. It's the, this is the one people think of whenever they picture Japan. And way down here, about a three and a half hour flight, is Okinawa. And, uh... <laughs> straight screamed all his name in excitement, yeah. She literally started streaming. Oh, Jose, oh, welcome in! She literally started streaming and, like, saw I went live and stopped. And I was like, no! Lily, no! <laughs> Let me give a uh, Jose a shout out. A resident panda oak. Yeah, hawk can kill. Should put you in the right direction, sure. Wanna see my wares again? <laughs> Wanna do it again? Brock. Fuck else you need. <laughs> Cause I ain't gonna work in relationship with that footwrecker no more. I wasn't about to let him use it without me, and he likewise. Only thing to do was put the brand 50 50. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, I need all on him in my existence, but we're here! Hope life has been treating you well. It, uh, it's been treating Olo just fine. The humans have had a little more trouble with the move, but that's fine. The move took us like two whole months, but I guess that's what happens when you're moving from Japan to America. Did not expect uh, Brock to receive me with such a warm welcome. Yes. Made me laugh so much. So, uh... Oh, you know, yeah, it's way down here. For people who don't know, Japan's border is like actually way up here. Uh, it actually owns the string of islands that is highly contested between them and uh, Russia. Hope the move was great. It went fine. It went as well as expected. I got super airsick in the Tokyo airport and just vomited all over the hotel lobby and I was mortified. <laughs> that is the last place I... Uh... How did you transport Olo? I had to buy her a plane ticket because, co you know, capitalism. <laughs> she's three feet tall and I could have literally stuck her anywhere since she's invincible. I could have stuck her on the wing and been fine, but I had to buy a ticket. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. It's fine. I get uh, motion sick really easy and I knew it was going to be trouble going in. But there's nothing I can do about it. Not even Dramamine helps. Olo in a soap bottle? I can't squeeze her that much without 
uh, pop in the bottle. She's not uh, infinitely shrinkable. I could probably shrink her down to like one foot tall. That's that's about it. So I keep telling Kev when he won't let me lick the engine. <laughs> Can I lick the engine? Uh, since Olo cannot respond, I'm going to answer in her stead and say no. No, you cannot lick the engine because I'm sure even fey wolves would get sick. Let me uh, go back. So, uh, yeah, all these little islands up here are actually Japan. And it even goes a little bit past Okinawa, uh, Okinawa as to where their uh, territory lies. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, this is their uh, flag. They have their own uh, prefecture flag, and this is it. It's a play on the original Japanese flag, of course. And the red is slightly different. It's got symbolism to it, and I am not smart enough to tell you what it is. But I'm not human either, no, but you have anatomy and organs that can be poisoned. Just saying. So I, I put here some of the symbolism and things that you see a lot in Okinawa. Because it is a big tourist destination, they've got things that they're constantly shoving down your throat. Uh, there's a big aquarium uh, section and a bit of ocean you could go out to see uh, the whale sharks. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Amandi actually went swimming with a whale shark uh, while he was living here alone uh, the year before I moved here. Uh, there's a bunch of historical castles and stuff that you can go visit. There's a bunch of World War II memorials. Um, the She's the Lions are super important there. Uh, they've got these purple sweet potatoes called uh, Ube. I don't know why that took so long. And <laughs> they're so freaking good. I'm gonna miss that the most. That was probably my favorite flavor while I was there. They're so good. Um, they're big into like the fresh tropical fruits, of course, because they're a tropical island. And there's this whole park called Pineapple Park that you can go to, and it's just what it sounds. It's a it's a theme park themed around pineapples on a pineapple farm. Okay, so here. I started off showcasing American Village. So uh, because Okinawa was um, so radically militarized during World War II, there's a lot of American military bases there. And so as a result of that, there's also this section in Okinawa called American Village that is supposed to be like uh, what Americans would have like a Chinatown or like a little Italy uh, in their cities. But this is American Village and it looks, of course, nothing like America. Like all the little subsections of these things never look like their original places. Um, but it's uh, a place where a lot of Japanese tourists go. And whenever we were leaving, there was a ton of tourists there. Uh, and they all had Orion beer shirts and uh, like every every single one of them. <laughs> it was funny. We were like, why? But it's a uh, Orion beer uh, is made in Okinawa from what I gathered. And so all the tourist shops have like the Orion beer uh, shirt you get whenever you go there, and that's like a big touristy thing you do in Okinawa. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of food you could get there that's kind of fusion cuisine. There you have a lot of world food. There's uh, Indian food and there's Japanese food. And the American food is more like uh, fusion cuisine. Uh, a lot of the things you'll notice is eggs on everything. Japan loves eggs. They love putting eggs on any dish and they will find an excuse to do it. So like the burger places will usually have eggs on the burgers and uh, 
Anything that has noodles will have eggs and... There's just this weird obsession with eggs and food. To a surprising degree. That, that was one thing I did not expect. Or no. Like even... Uh, uh, there's this thing... What did they call it? So it's kind of like a hamburger steak, but it comes with an egg on it to... I want to... I think I'm wrong, so I'm not going to say what I thought it was. It's a loco something. I thought it was a loco moco, but I may be wrong. Uh, but I also... <laughs> I took a picture of this shirt. It's for sale in American Village, and I thought it was funny. It was like, catch and taste, quite a catch, and it reminded me of my dad. And I almost bought it for him, but I didn't. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so uh, while we were living in Okinawa, we were present for Typhoon uh, Kanun. Uh, Kanun, sorry. And, uh, it was a pretty sizable, uh, typhoon. Uh, for Americans, typhoons are hurricanes. They're same thing, different lingo. Uh, so these were a couple of, uh, snapshots of the storm. Uh, this little heart here, this is Okinawa. And, uh, the storm... It did this thing where it came in, it hit the island, took out the power for most places, flooded a bunch of stuff, pushed over a bunch of trees, lifted a bunch of cars and put them under their parking lots. All that good jazz. And then it moved up back towards China. And then it came back down and hit a second time. <laughs> we were without power for a few days after that. But, uh, luckily they were able to restore the power after the fourth day, I think? Bum. Bum, 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 bum. Why has my chat not been updating? Oh my gosh, so many people have been talking. Okay, hold on. I gotta pull up chat on my phone because for some reason the, the chat on the computer was not updating. So let me go through and see your questions. Uh, but the day before, we went to one of our favorite pizza places called Slappy Slice. If you're ever in Okinawa and you've, you're going to be in that area, I'd recommend going to Slappy Slice. I swear I'm not trying to hug a little and ham through the tablet, I promise. Doubt. Slow, deep breaths. Okay, let's see here. But uh, I have major storm anxiety because, fun fact, one says, a child, I was picked up by a tornado for a few seconds. Uh, luckily, our mother was right there and was able to pull us back down to earth. But that has left me with some lingering trauma surrounding the noise uh, of strong wind. And so that was not a fun experience overall. Okay, so Lily's trying to look at the engines. We said no. She probably did it anyway. Uh, you never know the consequences. Never go above consequences. Neat geography lesson. Yeah, I didn't realize Japan was so long. Like, I knew about the uh, southern islands, but I didn't know about the, the ones that were so close to Russia. Thank you for sharing all this. Of course, I just want to share... Hey, Purple Rain, welcome in. Sorry I didn't see you earlier. Let me give you a shout out. It'd help if I did this correctly. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Quavo! I made that. <laughs> Quavo, you just made that shit. <laughs> Yo, chat. Yo. Yo, Quavo, you just made that shit. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Yo, Claire, what the fuck was that? It this shit was. You look about it, and yeah, Lily stopped streaming, right? Like, we started streaming at like the exact same time, and she stopped so fast, and I felt bad. Pineapple is a weird berry, indeed. Uh, how much racism did you face? Um, so there wasn't, there was only one case of like a blatant confrontation that I had. The, the, the racism I faced was kind of microaggression y and not even in a bad way. So I would try to speak to the people in Japanese and they would speak back to me in English because they thought they were being polite. But it's like, I'm, I'm trying to learn the culture. I'm trying to learn the language. Please let me partake. And it kind of felt like a shutdown after a while. So I just stopped. Like I would still talk to them in Japanese as much as I could. But, uh, if they started talking to me in English, I just started talking back to them in English because I didn't. It made me feel like I was saying it wrong or something. And I know they were just trying to be polite. They meant no harm by it. So it's not like they were being bad people, but they just automatically assume that uh, foreigners don't want to speak the local language. But there were a fair amount when you did speak to them in Japanese, they'd be like, oh, sugoi. You know, they, they'd be like, oh, wow. But then immediately they'd be like, start talking to you in English again. Your Japanese is so good. And it's like, thanks. Can we keep talking in it? And they're like, yeah. I set my foot on fire. How do you do that? Egg on burger is numb. I actually don't like eggs. Like the only way I'll eat an egg is if it's smothered in other stuff like deviled egg because there's so much mayonnaise and stuff in it. That's the only way I'll eat it or egg salad. I was a meteorologist once upon a time. Ooh, <laughs> fascinating. You're going to have to tell me about that because that's actually kind of cool. The happy spoons. Yes, I'm glad you have happy spoons. Thank you, SVG, for getting that bot. <laughs> Loud Lily laugh. Yes, I totally licked the engine anyway. I knew you would. Not doing the shout outs because I'm just happy you're here. That's fine. Let's see if Japan has a reputation on par with Bermuda Triangle. Yes, um, and it, actually there's this theory that and I don't believe it, but there's this conspiracy theory that the Bermuda Triangle is a black hole and then the Dragon Triangle, which is like the Japanese equivalent, is a white hole because there's a bunch of things that'll just like uh, appear there and nobody knows why, but they do know why. It's just because they disappear there too. I should introduce you uh, to Fluff one of these days. Yes, definitely. Don't want to talk about it? That's fine. I just hope it doesn't blister. <laughs> Japanese people have their own way of thinking. Their own bubble works differently. Yes. Uh, the Japanese mindset is very much hospitality driven. Uh, they, they want to accommodate so much uh, because that's part of their culture. Uh, but sometimes they wind up uh, accidentally being a little insensitive. But if you if you tell them, hey, like if you if you're trying to have a long form conversation, you say, hey, I want to try to speak Japanese, they'll humor you. Ken has a random graphic artist in his DMs. Yeah. While you're gone, there's a new bots and they tend to uh, fill the viewer list with the experience gained. The action will be taken. Thank you so much. I noticed that when I went over to do shout outs, I was like, who, who are all these people? But I didn't want to assume they were bots. Uh, just a tablet is a talk to text. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. This is extense should visit more space friends, even if dangerous. For humanity. 
definitely. We'd love to see people's travels too. Their visitations. You're welcome to visit me if you would ever like. I'm going to definitely try to make that a thing. Yeah, so this this typhoon, this is the exact path it took. Um it came up, it this is like Okinawa here. It came up, it passed over the island, like the eye of the storm was even in our town too. Uh passed through and then bounced back and we got clipped by like a big side of it again. I would legitimately cry to meet you in person. There would be tears. Same. We're going to be a waterworks factory. Uh, like here's some trees that got knocked over in a shopping area close to where we lived. And all of the trees and our sidewalks too, they were uprooted and it was sad because they were young. They had so much to give. But <laughs> they... um. They were knocked down and like just in the walkway for several weeks. Still had to mix it up open, so I heard that. Um, okay, let's see. So uh, now we're going to get into the trips. Uh, one of the places we went to was this uh, place called Busena Park. Uh, it's an underwater observatory that has glass bottom boats and then there's like a little beach area. Um, there's Okinawa's got a lot of beaches, artificial beaches with netted off swimming areas. Um, they're all very good for snorkeling and stuff like that. So this is one of those places. It had a water obstacle course and everything. Uh, so they've got these glass bottom boats. There was one that was plain, but then there's this one that had Pokemon on it. And that's the one we went on. And we were so happy because we didn't get to choose and it just worked out that way. And, you know, being the nerds that we are, we loved it. By the way, Balloon Pikachu is everywhere in Okinawa. And we don't know why. Like Balloon Pikachu, like you think it would be like a Alolan versions of things because basically... Okinawa is the Alolan region, but uh, instead it's like they do have some Alolan Pokemon, but it's like a lot of balloon Pikachu. <laughs> Pikaloon! <laughs> because kangaroos, yes. Hey, Jexoy, welcome in. It's good to see you. We heard you in a clip earlier whenever I shouted out uh, Mando. Thank you. I just got back? Ah, sweet. What? <laughs> These are my favorite clips. Literally turn one. What? Welcome back. We were just getting onto the trips. So we were just talking about how Balloon Pikachu is everywhere in Okinawa for some reason. Uh, but this is really, we got to go on the glass bottom boat. Uh, this was on the dock. Uh, there were just a bunch of puffer fish hanging around the, the dock area that we thought were pretty neat. They were fairly large too. They were like the size of my forearm and I'm a five foot eight person. Uh, so it was really neat. They had these little pictures that gave you the uh, names of all the fish. Of course, they're all in Japanese, but that's fine. Um. There's three, there's three alphabets in Japanese and I learned to read one of them and it's the one that's basically English or foreign language. <laughs> Just in uh, uh, a different alphabet. Yes, katakana. Uh, I learned the symbols for hiragana, but it doesn't really help you if you don't know the Japanese words as well. And then got into like the first 120 letters of the um, gosh, why does that escape me? The third alphabet. It's also the Chinese alphabet. Why? Why can't I think of it? I can read those too, but I don't know what anything means. <laughs> um, he got so into the, uh, the Sihiragana, Katakana, uh, 
was it kanji yeah kanji yeah kanji <laughs> thank you uh he got so into the kanji that uh, a Japanese, an older Japanese lady we made friends with got him the test booklet and she had wanted him to like get the certification because so few people in Japan actually read kanji um, that there's actually this testing system you could go through to get certifications with different levels so you, uh, you could like prove your proficiency and stuff. But uh, whenever Amandi moved here, uh, he had to ask the locals, how do you, you know, what's the best way to learn kanji? Can you help me with my kanji? And they're like, oh, we don't read kanji here. We just use the translate app. <laughs> so like a lot of the locals don't even read it. They just use the like trans Google translate on their phone. Can't get over how adorable you are. Thank you. It's a pleasure to finally meet your, uh, make your acquaintance. Same, thanks. I've always been lurking around. Nice boat, yes. We got to go in the Pokemon glass bottom boat and we did get to see quite a bit of fish. How did you and Amandi meet? Internet. We, uh, we found each other on OkCupid. Still the best thing I found on the internet. Don't most kanji have hiragana on the top to help? Yes, in a lot of places, um, there will be hiragana, but there won't be for certain things. So uh, sometimes company names won't do it if because they're like it's part of their brand image. But if it's like a sign trying to tell you information, they usually will have the uh, hiragana uh, above it or below it. So uh, we got to go on the glass bottom boat, but there's also a cool underwater observatory uh, in Busena. And this was it. Um, so there's this thing. It looks like a lighthouse on the top. And then you actually walk down um, a spiral staircase. Ooh, I need some water. There we go. You actually uh, go down a, a spiral staircase into the water. So here's a picture of the, uh, basically the inner workings of this thing. You walk out this pier to the lighthouse and then you go down the spiral staircase one way. There's an in staircase and an out staircase. Uh, so you go down and there's all these portholes in the ocean where you can see the reef and the fish. So uh, that, that was a really interesting experience. I do have some videos here that I'll play for you guys. You'll have to let me know if they're choppy or something because they were the last time I tried this, but I have a different computer now. Whoops. Let me go back. Why? Okay. So these other two are just pictures. This. Little Yellowfish was one of Amandi's favorites. Amandi loves aquatic life, so any uh, aquarium or anything we went to. Peesh, yes. Any aquarium or anything we went to <laughs> was his jam. Beautiful, yes, thank you. Those pictures did take a bit. So a lot of these pictures are, um, you'll notice there will be black boxes. Those are because I'm, those people didn't consent to be in my picture, so I'm not gonna be showing them. But thanks for shouting them out. I'm coming, I'm coming. Stay alive. Don't die, don't die. I wanna get you. No. If you're gonna keep talking about Amandi, I'm gonna give them a shout out. Yep. Reloaded. This one was pretty clutch, actually. Got a new kill here. Right here. The tides of battle have changed. Buster down. This old dog's leveled up, and the upgrades got him learning new tricks. <laughs> 
So we went to Universal in um, Osaka. So there's Universal Japan in Osaka, which is on the mainland. So we went for a mainland trip uh, a couple times. We went to Tokyo and we went to Osaka. And we went to Osaka specifically for Universal Studios. So we didn't get to explore much outside of it. Uh, so we, the biggest parts that we liked were Super Nintendo World, of course. The two of you put together a force for goodness? I hope so. Uh, so the entrance to Super Nintendo World is this uh, tube here. So from the outside, all you can see of Super Nintendo World is like this tunnel and a little bit of the top of a few things. Uh, like these uh, platforms here, these uh, false platforms with the coins on them. And you walk through and you enter into like Peach's castle and then you come out on the other side. Um, and it's like a whole different world. It all looks like a Mario world. Asking permission for a shout out channel with that interrupting? Go ahead. Feel free to shout out. Uh, so we went, we didn't get the armbands because there's like this whole interactive experience you could have with all the displays. If you've got a special armband, but we didn't pay the extra money for that. <laughs> it was already expensive enough to go, you know? Guys, I am in the battlefield. I'm ready for battle. <laughs> Carlos has entered the battlefield. I made a blue shell of death in Minecraft once. Sweet. <laughs> you totally saw that came over to talk for a second. I hope you're having a good stream, Carlos. Yeah. Uh, so we went to do Super Nintendo World. Uh, we only went on two rides. We went on the Mario Kart, which is where this Bowser's Castle uh, looking uh, entrance is. And going up here, this is like the entrance of Bowser's Castle. It's got this big statue of him. And everywhere you go, all the queue, the queue is super long. Um, luckily, the time we went, there weren't a lot of people. There were a lot of students because it was school field trip season. But overall, it wasn't too packed. So the queues weren't actually bad when we went. Um, and we started our day pretty early too, and I think that helped. But uh, there, the queues were just decorated with tons of super cool decorations from the Mario world. Uh, and then after you you get done with the... Uh, with the ride, you can go to this uh, cafe. And so this super cool cafe was uh, a really great experience. And I got a little cake. I think this was a tiramisu. The queue, uh, the word queue itself is queue, where the U's and the E's are lined up after the queue. Yes. My friend Sugar absolutely loves Sylvia and Lily. Aw, I totally showed it to her. That's so sweet. I'm glad you liked it. Olo worked on it just before stream. Because uh, going through a bit of artist block. So you gotta do the fun stuff. The dessert looks nom. It was. Freaking loved it. And I got... Um, I think we just got water because everything again was expensive. So there's this saying in my family, and it's such a Southern saying, you know, my family's from Texas, where they call something a $2 chicken. And what that means is it's going to be expensive in the end because they're like, you go to the market, you get a $2 chicken, but then you got to pay someone else $2 to pluck it. You got to pay someone else $2 to prepare it. And you got to pay someone else like $2 to, you know, cook it. So it's it's like the price of things compounds in a lot of cases. 
And that certainly was the case, you know. Two dollar chicken, yeah. Unless you already know how to pluck and break it down yourself, of course. Yeah, but my family wasn't going to do that. My grandma had trauma. My poor Nana um, had to try to kill a chicken and she couldn't break its neck right. And so it just kind of ran around with a broken neck for a really long <laughs> For like a few hours after she tried to kill it. So my family did not kill their own chickens after that. She says she hated plucking them too. She'd rather pay the two dollars. <laughs> uh, I raised chickens? Really? Neat. I finished up Helldiver's mission. Heck yeah! For democracy! I couldn't kill the animal myself, but I can clean it and prepare it. Yeah, I think a good uh, a good thing to go by is uh, try to limit your cost where you can, and you'll be able to do that through skills. It's not really needed in a lot of places in today's world, but that's fine. Uh. So I've got a video here. The second ride we went on was like a a really slow ride based on Yoshi's World. And you get to have this great view of the park from it. So I've got a video of that. Chickens are likely possessed. We'll see. So this is uh, Peach's Castle, where you enter and exit from. And this was, of course, the ride we were on. So you can see more of Peach's Castle here. There's like a rest seating area up here. That was really uh, neat, too. Everywhere there's like coins and Goombas. It was really fun. Uh, and then Amandi really liked the Harry Potter world, so I'm going to a scale of 1 to 10, how cool was it? Super Mario World, probably a 9. And the only reason I say that is there wasn't actually a lot of rides and a lot of them, a lot of the stuff was tied to the wristband interactions. And so that made it uh, a little less because you couldn't enjoy it fully unless you were willing to drop some big bucks. But definitely uh, a must go to if you're ever going to go to Japan. <laughs> Yoshi Sora Munch Koopas. Uh, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, is what I was going to say. I have a lot of, um, even before all the stuff with JK Rowling came out, I didn't like the stories. I liked them at first when I was like in third grade. Um, and then after book five, I, there was too many contradictions for me to stay invested. Yes, join the discord, become one of us, one of us, one of us. So, uh, Amandi is the one who got a lot out of Harry Potter world. The Sword of Truth. I'll think about it. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. But uh, we went to Harry Potter World, uh, mostly for Armandi. He had a blast. He went on the big roller coaster. I've been there before in Florida. It's basically the same thing. Uh, so he went on the big roller coaster that's in the castle. Uh, that was one of his... Uh, Favorite things because he's big into coasters. I stayed in the gift shop. Roller coasters are fun, not if you have motion sickness like me. But uh, it was a really cool interactive experience. I wanted to go into the pub and get food, but again, $2 chicken. And this was the view from our hotel room. We stayed in a universal hotel right outside the park. And you could see the movie lot section of the of the park from our window. So that's what this is. 
And then in the uh, restaurant cafe, they had the dinosaur theme stuff. Um, the root beer is great. I, I freaking missed it. I'm being raided by charcoal. Oh, Cole, you're so sweet. Thank you for being here. You want me to say that instead? <laughs> Sorry. Milk and me and Raiders. We'll be right with you after this clip. Uh, uh, okay, 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 uh, uh. You got this, Cole. You got uh, this. Bombard, yeah. There we go. So, uh, welcome in, everybody. Welcome in to the channel. Usually we're in the atrium. Today we're in the beige hell that is our temporary apartment. Uh, for those of you who are new here, Olo is the wonderful Golobian in my lap, and I am Ham, her human. Uh, Olo is here on Earth to study his culture through art, music, and games. But today we're talking about our time living in Japan. Hope everything is great. Thanks for coming in. Uh, do you prefer to be called Bass or Bass? Let me know your pronunciation. Or if you have another nickname, uh, we're cool with that too. What the heck is Hogwarts Express doing in Japan? Uh, Universal Studios. That's what it's doing. Why is... Uh, I noticed Mixed Up isn't wanting to work. Here, let me try to refresh it. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's not connected. Let me make sure it's connected. Boom. Okay, it should work now. Yeah, so, uh... The other... I was really sad. So we we went to Universal uh, basically right around the time the uh, travel restrictions were lifted for mainland for people to start coming in from other countries. We had been living in Okinawa uh, for a year prior to that so technically we could have gone sooner but we just wanted to respect the uh the locals as much as possible so we uh just refrained from travel until they were like hey you know uh come and travel again are none of the commands working what is this what is this magic this dark magic Bum, 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 bum. As you can tell, Cole knows Kevin, yes. Even Apollo started uh, saying donut. Aw. Interesting music? Yeah, Olo made it. Let me know if it's uh, triggering for you, though, because apparently that's a problem. Some of the songs have, we'll, we'll move it. Um, we'll change the song. Oh, there we go. Things are starting to work now. That's what it is. It was having trouble pushing through the, the welcome. Music is fine. Cool. Cool beans. So, uh, one of the other things we did in Osaka was we went to this really famous mall. Uh, backlog time. Heck yeah. <laughs> so we went to uh, Daimaru, which is a really famous mall in Osaka. And it has a Pokemon Center and Pokemon Cafe. So that's what most of these pictures are. And I also went to a nice uh, uh, like geek merch store while we were there. It was really fun. I want to see the Osaka castle someday. You should definitely, if you ever get the chance. Giving you a follow. We'll be sure to check out in future streams. Thanks for bringing me by. Aw, thanks for being here. Um, the Lego set is cute. Yes, I am a big fan of Lego. And thanks for the follow, Bass. Bass? Again. Did I miss that clarification? 
We'll have to see. Oh, and um, uh, Cole as uh, a feature of the channel. If we get rated, we give you one free art commission. A uh, view or a character of your choice with a random object redeem. Uh, system. I did not have that activated today. But let me know if you're interested in getting some free art and I'll message you later. With your info! Uh, so... We were able to uh, go to the Poke Cafe, so the, this uh, Snorlax here is actually a pancake in a Snorlax dish. Uh, and it's got like the chocolate syrup and the whipped cream and the the fruits in it. Uh, Amandi is the one who ate it and he said it was okay. <laughs> a lot of these themed cafes are actually not great tasting usually. They're all about looks. Um, and then I had this uh, parfait and it was uh, very cute and I liked it. Uh, then we went to the different merch stores because the way malls are designed in Japan usually is different floors have different purposes. So one floor will be nothing but shops of women's clothes. The next floor will be nothing but shops of men's clothes. One floor will be furniture stores and one floor is like the geek floor. You know, where all the nerds get to go for their their niche uh, desires. Uh, so I got this uh, Lego flower set and now I'm obsessed with Lego flowers. And there's also this uh, anime I watch uh, that I absolutely fell in love with that's about Egyptian gods in these beautiful little blob forms. And they're all just kind of dumbasses and I love it. <laughs> Notification, yeah. No, Lily, don't tell me you canceled a stream with Cole for me. No. I admittedly fell. I still had at least an hour until him or Rolo went live. Dumbass blobs, yes. I love anything that's just a dumbass blob. Yeah, apparently, I think it may be uh, our fault. Maybe our our uh, stream in your time zone thing was still messed up. We planned on double rating you. Aw, you're so sweet. I'm sorry. I believe in Dragonized Supremacy. Yeah, if you guys have a, a favorite Pokemon, that'd be cool to know. Mine's Mimikyu. Um, Olo's is Ditto for obvious reasons. Bum, bum, bum. I want to visit uh, Team Lab <laughs> Light Show thingy in Tokyo. Yeah, we uh, that was not operational whenever we went. Thank you, thank you. Ditto, <laughs> Sylveon. Yes, we just uh. Uh, enjoyed our time here and these uh, installations there were unique to this Poke Center because we've been to a couple of them throughout Japan. Charmander. Charmander's pretty sweet. Stares at channel points. <laughs> getting there, it's getting close. Uh, so here's a more food showcase of stuff we got to eat and stuff that I thought was neat. Um, so we went to this breakfast place near the beach one time that had these wonderful lemonade things. They were so good. Oh, so good. And uh, Amandi got this for his breakfast and so we weren't expecting it to be so tall. It was almost inedible with how tall it was. We had, they, uh, we had to break it down to get it to be eaten. You're so close to that commission, yeah. Uh, and then Amandi, one of the foods he's obsessed with is uh, like acai bowls. Yes, I did turn uh, Chaos Lily into a Sibleon. Uh So there was this place called Morning Bowls in uh, Okinawa that uh, Amandi went to religiously. 
Also, you can see his beautiful Pokemon table placemat there. Uh, in the mall next to where we live, because literally the mall was a block away from our apartment, our second apartment. Uh, was this steakhouse that had this this cow in it that reminded me so much of something you'd see in Texas. The best section of any tour. Food! Yes. Still watching Transformers. Gonna join you soon. Ah, oh, thanks. Have fun. That cow is terrifying. Yes. Out of mind. I can't, I can't. I can't bully him because he's just so sweet. I can't do it. Yeah, cat's a big marshmallow of a puppet. Love him. Love him to bits. Uh, so there was this ceramic cow that stood ominously outside the steakhouse. Um. One of the resorts we went to had these um, uh, melon pond, which is uh, melon flavored bread. And they had it shaped like turtles. So that was really cute. The big thing that uh, is an obsession in Japan is resort buffets. So a lot of uh, hotels will have a buffet and it is common just to go to the resort to eat at the buffet and walk around like the respective park or something that it's connected to. And it is a big cultural thing. It's a... <laughs> it's a little strange, but we learned that from the older Japanese woman we befriended. Every time we had a celebration, but let's go to the buffet. I've got a buffet picked out. Just meet me at this buffet. <laughs> Every time. And, like, literally... Just, like... We would... Be like, okay, we're paying next time, though. We're, we're definitely paying next time. And she would show up 30 minutes early to pay for us ahead of time. It was so frustrating. Uh, although, I don't know why, but your avatar reminds me of the game Toka Kitchen. I'm going to have to look that up. I've never heard of that one. Bardic Inspiration! Yes. Yeah, the, the person here is me, Ham, and then the, the gal moving around in my lap is Olo. Olo is a blob. It's a weird cooking game. I'll have to look into it because it sounds like it'd be kind of fun, actually. Uh, so in our favorite ramen shop, which is where this picture is from, uh, they had a... Okinawa and Coca-Cola can that I thought was really neat. So I took a picture of it while we were there. It's got the cheeses on it and the uh, uh, hibiscus flowers. I wish to cuddle both of you with all the hugs. Aw, thanks. There is a Toka Lab elements that you can explore a periodic table. <laughs> Interesting. I'm going to have to check these games out. Yes. <laughs> May the Ola 2 command works. Thank you. Aw, thanks, SPG. That's so sweet. They're on mobile. Okay. I'll definitely check it out. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So our favorite ramen shop was really close to the first apartment we lived in. Whenever I first moved to Japan, Amandi was in an apartment right on the beach. But um, so the way real estate works in Japan is kind of weird. Uh, so in America, just because I know I've got some international viewers, the way it works in the United States is you go either online or to a realtor and you say, here's what I'm looking for. And they take you to the different houses available or you could pick them out yourself and then go like meet up with the owner or meet up with the realtor yourself at that location. It's very kind of free movement in Japan. You cannot do that. You have to go through a housing agency and it's um, a real estate agency that owns apartments all throughout the island in different buildings. 
So you'll have like one building of apartments that has like six different companies operating in it and leasing out like apartments and stuff. And they do not like listening to you. And I don't know if that's because we were uh, American or if it, it's something that Japanese renters also experience. But the real estate people we talked to did not want to listen to our our desires. And when Amandi went uh, went to Japan first, he went to the first real estate agency he could find and said here are the things I would like. And they're like, we only have one apartment. It's the only one we have and you have to take it now. And so he did. And <laughs> apparently that's a big con uh, that they run. I'm excited for you. That's going to be so fun. But uh, yeah, there was um, the whenever we were looking for the second apartment, uh, the one of the first real estate agencies we went to, the gentleman was showing us all kinds of places that did not have our requirements. Like our biggest requirement was must have its own appliances already in it. And he kept taking us to places that did not have appliances. And it was so frustrating. So we went to a second company and luckily we got a really nice company that time. And they did take us to places we wanted. Uh, and it may be a difference in gender as well, because the the third real estate agent in the line of people during our experience was a woman. And the first two were men. So I don't know if that's a thing. If that's a factor. But uh, it was an experience. Uh, but the, in the first apartment, uh, just a couple blocks down uh, from the apartment uh, section. It sounds oof? Yeah. Another weird thing I noticed is a lot of the apartment complexes, they're called manor or mansion um, or something like that. But it's like an apartment complex. But it's, it's a big thing where a lot of places will be called insert name manor, insert name mansion uh, and stuff like that. Like Oceanside Manor or um, Seaside Mansion or st stuff like that. I remember that from Chobis. <laughs> so there was a the ramen place, and this was actually a chain. It was not like a mom and pop, uh, but it had it was like to date the best ramen we had had in Okinawa. Uh, it was so good. Uh, and then uh, at the mall where we lived, they had this wonderful curry place that had naan that was like the size of my head. Oh, it was such good naan. And then this place here, I felt so bad. So this was a pottage restaurant. And so these are actually stone bowls. There's a candle underneath here that is keeping everything in the bowl heated uh, while you're eating there. And we felt bad because this is something we found out was a huge cultural difference. Uh, in Japan, they do not do takeout. So we ordered a bunch of stuff and we're like, hey, can we have to go boxes? And they're like, oh, sorry, we don't do that. And it was a consistent thing where you would go to places and they do not do to go orders. Um, COVID changed that where the, you have you can order takeout. But a lot of places won't let you, even if they do take out, they won't let you just take it from the table. And I think that may be, I don't know, culturally rude or something. But we felt so bad because we literally had to leave that food to, to waste and it was awful. That reminds me of the ramen place I was at our mall recently. Yeah, it was a really good ramen place. The broth was fantastic. So this is the second compilation, which is uh, the Kombini kind of stuff. The, the wonderful world of the Japanese uh, convenience store. So in Japan, convenience stores are separate from gas stations. And a lot of gas stations are still service gas stations. I will take care. Thank you. Let me get some water first.
And then I'll do a stretch. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the convenience stores are separate from the gas stations, and a lot of gas stations are still ones with service. Cam Aloha <laughs> had an hour and a half. Not taking a break. Thank you. I don't even need to sign that. You know who's talking. Yes, I know. Yeah, OB. OBB. Yeah. Uh, so the convenience stores have more like uh, just food items and everyday necessities. Uh, and then the gas stations are a separate commodity. So that changes the experience, I think. Um, they're very clean. The food's very nice. Of course, it's healthier than American gas station food, but it's not healthy by any means. So please don't go around thinking you're making the healthy choice eating at a kombini. Uh, so one of my favorite drinks I got there was this ginger, uh, this ginger ale. And you could taste the ginger on it. It was so good. Like you could actually taste ginger like ginger tea. Nothing like American ginger ale at all. Um, these were the corn dogs. They were absolutely massive. Um, Macari Sweat is a popular like, uh, like it's like Aiderade, but uh, the flavor is melon and it's always clear. Uh, but it's like an electrolyte drink that's really popular there. Uh, I didn't care for it, but Amandi was obsessed with it. Uh, this is a uh, omu rice place, which is omelet rice uh, that was in our uh, in the mall next to our uh, second apartment. And then I had to take a picture of this because this is just weird food. It's it's uh, corn. It's cornbread. So if you read if you read this here, <laughs> it's um, it's cornbread and. It's just like corn on a bread. <laughs> it it has like cheese and stuff on it too. But I, the, there's also the second thing that Japan has an obsession with that I didn't realize was corn. And the reason why was they had a big trade thing with the Portuguese. And uh, they brought corn over. And so there's corn. You could get corn on pizza, corn on, corn on bread products. There's just like corn everywhere. Just like so much corn. Like, as far as countries and corn obsession goes, America's number one, Japan may be number two. <laughs> um, then there was like, they had these sandwiches that were basically like Uncrustables, but they had ham and cheese and mayonnaise. They were so good. Uh, this is Pepsi Nama, which is like the localized Pepsi. You could get normal Pepsi and then Pepsi Nama. And Pepsi Nama has like a more lime taste to it. I love trains in Japan. Trains in Japan are cool. Love the subways in Tokyo when we went. Minimums! But, uh, the, I took this picture because you can't really see it here, but it's like tagline is it's taste gives. So every time we would like eat something we liked, we would say to each other, it's taste gives. <laughs> After that, we just loved it. Uh, then there were a bunch of peach drinks. Um, there were a bunch of fruit-based sodas that were pretty nice. The peach drinks all tasted like like the candy peach rings. And uh, there was also a lot of yuzu lemon products because uh, there's this uh, famous kind of citrus lemon that's in Okinawa. And I cannot pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. But it's similar to a yuzu. It's like a bitter li uh, lemon citrus fruit. Uh, and then on one of our trips to an island, there was this wonderful long potato. And it is just like a really long french fry. And for people who don't know, the way french fries are usually made is by boiling potatoes and then mashing them and 
mixing them with cornstarch and then like piping them out into a fryer. Um, and this one was just an extra long french fry and it just tasted kind of bland. I was kind of sad. <laughs> uh, so you could get it with uh, some other toppings, of course, that were like ketchup mayo or like this mayonnaise mixed with uh, fish roe. Fun fact, Dutch and a bit of Portuguese traders were free to trade in times of Japanese uh, isolationism. Yes, they were the few countries that were allowed in. Uh, because they didn't force Christianity into their trade, it didn't want to convert the Japanese people to Christianity. That is true. They were more interested in making bag than they were spreading the word of their lord. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Unless it's a chaos potato and then you hug it. Uh, and then there was this one video I'm going to show you guys, and it just makes too much sense. Like, this is a sauce packet for the corn dog, and then one side is ketchup and one side is mustard. And I just want to show you guys how, like, horribly abused we are in the United States, because look how wonderful this is. So you just pinch it together and then squeeze it out. And it was made everything so clean. It was such a nice experience. As someone who's struggled with many a ketchup packet, uh, it was life changing and I'm going to miss it. <laughs> That's another thing. The packaging is really easy to open in Japan. It is so hard in the States, and since you have to recycle everything, the labels come off easier. And I don't know why they don't do that. Well, I know why, money, but it sucks that they don't do that in the States. I've see seen stuff like that years ago. This was my first experience with it. Okay, here are some of the local treats that are like Japan staples that, uh, that I tried out while I was there. Uh, so this was, uh, it's kind of like, if you ever heard of Dongo, it's like a rice ball on a stick and they've got three flavors and usually one of them's like matcha. One of them's just plain. This one's sauce. Like I thought this was going to be a sweet thing, but it's actually savory. It's, uh, it's got like a, like a teriyaki sauce almost on it. I'm not quite sure what the sauce is, but it was savory like a teriyaki sauce. Yeah, it's her Mr. Krabs money. Uh, then I did try the takoyaki, which is a octopus in a like uh, batter bowl. And the first time I, I took a bite, uh, so we went with our older Japanese friend and the first time I took a bite, Everything was fine. I was like, wow, I actually like this. And I was worried because I don't like fish and it has octopus in it. But I was like, octopus doesn't have flavor. It's just texture. You know, I could do this. So I took a first bite. It didn't have octopus in it. It just had the batter and it was amazing. And then I was like, hey, I like this. And uh, our Japanese friend was like, oh, I'm so happy. And then I took the second bite and then I got the octopus. And the moment my teeth clenched around it, I almost vomited everywhere. <laughs> And so I just like slowly covered my mouth and like chewed through the sensation and just like tried to get through it and swallow it as fast as possible. And they were asking me, they're like, are you OK? And it's like, uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. It was so, so sad. I wanted to like I wanted to like it, but um, the rubbery texture of the octopus did not jive with my my body. Is winter squeaking? Probably. The taste of octopus is so good. The texture can totally uh, bite me. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's this uh, winter's nuzzling you on the TV. That's so sweet. Hi, winter. Cutie. 
Winter was snuggly. Oh, I'm honored. I can't remember what these are called, and I, like, have told the story a million times. These are good. My brain just can't think while I'm streaming. Gotta go. Have fun, Opie. Thank you for being here. I hope you had fun watching Transformers. Uh, in the pizza huts and stuff, like the pizza places, they have these rice dishes where it's like rice with the pizza toppings instead of like bread. That was a huge thing. So I wanted to include that in here. Takoyaki, yeah. <laughs> Takoyaki is the octopus one. It's just what I am. Oh, sorry. The last brain cell! Yeah! This is Opie right now. Get some rest! The word is on the tip of my brain. I know it's like takoyaki, and my, my brain hates me for it. <laughs> this song is my brain. Uh, so, uh... Never had brain cells to begin with? Aww. Of course you did. They were just covered in cutie glitter so you couldn't see them. Ah, uh, so the fam famous jelly donut. I had to get the famous jelly donut from Pokemon. Taiyaki! There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's what this is. It's a Taiyaki. Thank you. I have 133 brain cells. That's more than I have. So this one, uh, this one was plum flavored. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so in the localization of the American dub of uh, the original Pokemon series, instead of just calling this a rice ball, like any normal company should have, the four kids dub called it a jelly donut. And uh, it's got the, the plum in it. Um, so I tried many a rice ball while I was there because they come with an assortment of different feeling, uh, fillings. I liked the plain one and there was a tuna mayonnaise one that I liked really well. The plum one was super powerful, like way too overpowering on the sour. Minus 133. <laughs> So, um, and I preferred the version, since I don't like fish taste, I preferred the version that just came in the plastic without the seaweed, because the seaweed fl uh, flakes kind of rub off on the, on the rice and you get that ocean taste and it makes me sick. Well, well here's some more nerd merch we got while, uh, we were there. Uh, we didn't buy these, but these are like the rubber finger stuff you put on your fingers when you're like an office worker to help you go through the papers without them sticking. And uh, I just thought they were really neat. As someone who was an office worker that had to wear the rubber finger so often, I wish I had access to these. But at the time, after we moved and I wasn't office working anymore, they were useless to me. So they stayed in Japan. Uh, so we went to, there was a store in the mall that was just, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, merchandise. And so I got a coin purse, which came in super handy. I use this coin purse so often. Uh, Japan is still very much a, um, physical money kind of country. There's a lot of places you go that still won't accept cards and most of their money is coins. There is paper bills. But uh, most everything can be paid for by coin. And so the coin purses are really uh, handy. So if you're going to go to Japan, maybe invest in a coin purse and invest in a handkerchief because they do not have public paper towels uh, in their restrooms. So you have to come with prepared or you're going to leave with wet hands because a lot of uh, restrooms will not have paper towels and they will not have uh, drying stations, like the air dryers. So definitely get a handkerchief if you're going to go to Japan. Uh, anyway, so I got these cute little chopsticks, the handkerchief, and the coin purse. 
And this is the handkerchief all uh, spread out. Kiki's Delivery Service is one of my favorite Miyazaki films. Spirited Away, Kiki. I still haven't been able to see The Boy and the Heron, but I'm sure that's going to be up there. Uh, and Princess Mononoke. Because I'm basic. And this was an interesting crepe stand. Uh, so crepes are written in the feelings. <laughs> you should watch Howl's Movie Castle. I have. It's just not one of my favorites. Uh, it's one I enjoy. Let me clarify. Howl's Movie Castle is one I enjoy. But if I'm thinking of my top three Miyazaki films, it's got to be Kiki's uh, Princess Mononoke and it away. And then House Moving Castle is like four. Uh, so crepes are really big in Japan. You can get them with all kinds of fillings, but there's this one here that's hot dog, tuna, corn, ketchup, and lettuce. I thought that was interesting. There's a taco one where you can get with like a... It's got like the taco meat and a tomato. One's got like chicken and stuff in it, like a sandwich. And then you've got the sweet stuff that's got like berries or ice cream and chocolate and stuff like that. I've seen Kiki's, but I haven't seen the other two, I think. I might have seen Spirited Away. I would definitely give it a watch if you can sometime. Tacos, mmm, yes. Uh, so this was some more merch. Uh, this little stegosaurus, I'm so sad because this little stegosaurus was literally the first Gashapon I ever went to. And uh, I lost it in the Okinawa airport somewhere. <laughs> so it's it's gone forever. Uh, but I got these wonderful lap pillows. Of course, Olo uses uh, the stegosaurus here for her tablet whenever she's doing the art streams. Uh, and these are just like some fun gashapons. Dino snores, yes. There were uh, some fun gashapons, so delivery animals, which are just boxes with little animals sticking out of them, and all parts sticking out of them. Uh, high heel cats, and they're literally just cats stretching in the like cat stretch pose, but they're also a shoe. <laughs> and then uh, this one says Oishi Futan. So it's delicious. Uh, delicious bed kind of and so it's animals on different foods are being like covered in blankets of other foods but uh then there is this this was probably the most interesting vending machine in the area we lived in it's time for invasive capitalism it was time a long time ago we're past it but i will take a drink of water and stuff but this sriracha vending machine was literally just outside the mall. So outside the mall door was a, an ice cream vending machine, a Coca-Cola vending machine, and then the sriracha vending machine. <laughs> I thought that was just, I thought it was neat. Okay, these are the miscellaneous story section. That the hot sauce machine need constant refilling? I don't know. Because uh, the thing about Japan is these ones you see here are not for sale. These are displays. And so there will be a lot of vending machines where they have a display bottle. So you can't actually see the amount of supply like you can in America. <laughs> Sriracha vending machine sounds delicious. I wish for hot sauce from a vending machine. Uh, it tastes exactly like the kind you buy in the store, I assure you. So, yeah, we, there's no telling how often this had to be refilled, and they refill it in like the dead of morning when no one's around. So, these are a few stories. Um, so up here, we'll start up here. This one's easy. Just nearby the place, we the first apartment. There is this uh, business sign and it says for rent happiness and we think it's for uh, a housing uh, company. <laughs> uh, 
And then in Japan, there's constantly this problem with mold in the sinks. I had to clean it every other day because all the plumbing, for some reason, the there's always this pit of water that is always in the sink or the bathtub, in the bathtub drain, that is just always sitting there. And I don't know why, but it's it was built into every apartment we lived in and in every hotel room we've ever stayed in in Japan. There's always this pool of water that is always sitting there. And so it's it was a big mold, just a, a tractor. So definitely had to clean that so much. Where's the Mario when you need them? Uh, this here, these are like, uh, they're like pickled uh, shallots. They're pickled onions and uh, you can find them at a lot of restaurants. It's like a palate cleanser. Those were really tasty. And I didn't know what I was looking for when I went in the store because I'd only had them at a restaurant. And so the first time I got them, I got cocktail onions. And cocktail onions are onions that have been soaked in vodka. They are not what these are. <laughs> and it was it was a bad experience. Uh, Mandy and I don't consume alcohol. And so it was very unpleasant. <laughs> and uh, one time we were going to be in Japan for Thanksgiving. And so I ordered a turkey online um, at a grocery store. And they substituted the one I ordered for one that was way too big for me to cook at our house. It was way too much. Especially because I didn't have an oven. A lot of Japanese houses do not have ovens and you have to buy like an oven as a convection oven as a separate piece. Uh, so we didn't have an oven. I just had uh, the Instant Pot and I had to cook like a 20 pound turkey by cutting it down. It took me like an hour to get it cut down enough to where I could put in the Instant Pot to cook it. Okay, so these are plants. So Amandi and I are plant parents and the plants are our babies and we are constantly obsessed with them. So I've got some of their baby pictures here and then what they look like when we had to give them away and we cried a little on the inside. So this is a, the baby picture of this one. We got them at the store. My people. <laughs> yes, got a gecko. Um, this was Flapjack, our... Uh, Monstera plant when they were first coming into our house. And uh, these plants Amandi uh, got from a co-worker and they're like, they're dying. We we don't know what to do. And Amandi was like, I'll take them. And so these pictures here, this one was Trunks, the tree Amandi rescued from uh, an office building. It was basically dead. House gecko, yes. And uh, so uh, Trunks was very well taken care of and we got a bromeliad along the way that just would not stop producing pups. So many bromeliads. So these were uh, what our plants looked like whenever we had to give them away. And it was so sad. They were so beautiful. Uh, again, because uh, it's such a moist environment, like Japan's humidity is almost 100 no matter where you go. And Okinawa is especially humid because everything's like basically sea level and it's hot. But uh, mushrooms would grow in the pots and I'd have to pluck them out sometimes. And then in both of the apartments, there would be these geckos. We don't know how they would get in, but they would get in and we'd let them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sus. Yeah. So this uh, this one was in our first uh, apartment. You know, the sounds not working over here for some reason. I'll have to uh, troubleshoot it later. Like the, the videos will work, but the sound alerts won't. So this is the stairway to heaven. It's in Okinawa and Amandi took me. So Amandi loves to exercise. Like, um, he's the kind of person that gets energized by exercising. And 
He took me here. I am not a person who gets energized by exercise, even when I do it routinely. Like I did it for every other day for a whole year and it never did anything for me. But uh, he took me to this place and he's like, look, it's real easy. It's just a set of stairs. You go up and you go down. And this is like an insanely steep hill. And there's like 200 or more steps. And it's so steep and long. You cannot see the top from the bottom and you cannot see the bottom from the top. <laughs> and I was dying. So I actually dissociate. I have a dissociative disorder and I was so dissociative. Like the first, uh, you can see there's like different sections here, like right about here. I was already dissociating so hard. <laughs> it sucked. I kind of like Amandi, but I have a very low social battery. Yeah, Amandi does too, actually. So, uh, it was not a pleasant experience for me, but I went, I did it. I went all the way up once, went all the way down once. And the entire time we were going, there was a lady with a baby on her back that lapped us like seven times. She was a beast. Okay, uh, so this one is an island just a little bit off of Okinawa. This is Naganu Island and it's literally just a sandbar and you can't go to most of the most of it because it's a nature reserve. Uh, so the big thing is just like it's a beach. It's a little beach resort. We stayed at a cabin there. It was nice, uh, but it just had some pleasant views and they had a ton of hermit crabs everywhere. Uh, so the sand that wasn't artificial, it's like shells and coral. So that's what this picture is. And then you had to be careful because on your shoes, like even this little guy, this little hermit crab here, they would crawl up onto your shoes while you left them on the beach. Uh, so this waterfall was from Yambaru National Park. This was another one of those moments where Abandi was like, it's super short. You know, there's like no stairs and we got there and it was all stairs and all climbing and I was dissociating the entire time. It was awful. Amandi loved it. I nearly died. Uh, and this is the Okinawan uh, uh, entrance at the uh, mall uh, in Kitanaka Gusuku, which is the town we lived in. Um, and it's a uh, Nololan Arcanine. I wonder... I think I'm only like halfway through these, so I wonder if we should continue this another day. I'm on slide 21 of 43. <laughs> and so I think what we'll do, because I'm set to end soon, we'll go through the aquarium section and then we'll find someone to raid out to and we'll uh two hours of japan love it yeah well there's gonna be two more in the future but uh we'll save the other half for another time so uh there's this really famous aquarium in okinawa it's uh the Chirami aquarium and it's actually the third largest aquarium in the world. I think the first one is in the United States and Georgia. Uh, so when we went, the aquarium still wasn't open yet. So we went to the little buffet. Again, buffets are a huge thing. Uh, so we went to a little buffet and got a wonderful ocean view while we ate. You could talk for hours and I would just listen. I have missed your voice so much. Aw, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, so, uh, Tarami is actually in a big, uh, complex of different, like, uh, things to go to. So that's what this park map is. Tarami's right here. And there's, uh, a tropical, uh, garden over here. And, uh, Ocean Culture Museum that we went to. The Ocean Culture Museum, uh, had, like, a bunch of maritime history about Pacific Islanders including boats and different cultural items and ways they used to fish. It was a good experience. Oh, kid, kid got the art commission. 
You did it! <laughs> Make sure to DM Olo with your, uh, with your requests over on Discord. Or wherever you please. With 38 left to spare, heck yeah. I will. So Tarami was really fun. At the entrance next to the buffet, uh, there was this Lego whale shark that was just freaking amazing. Um, so that was really neat. Um, and this is a map of the aquarium itself. I'm eagerly awaiting to see the beautiful art you come up with. Ah, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll definitely do our best. So the aquarium is huge, obviously. It's the third in the world. Third largest in the world. Pieces for peace! Yeah. So... <laughs> you made my entire day with a picture you sent earlier? Aw, I'm glad. Uh, so here we've just got some clownfish. These eels, they're another like staple of Okinawa tourism. These little uh, sand eels are a big item all over the place. Like you'll, you could find in any tourist shop, you're going to be finding uh, merch with these little sand eels. And we even got one for our refrigerator. That's a magnet. I'll have to share it uh, whenever we get our final shipment of furniture. And these are just a couple pictures of all the beautiful fish. I do have a few videos here, of course. Um, so this one here was like an independent aquarium. There will be a fish digging here in this corner. Yeah, this guy literally spit out sand and it almost went into this other guy's sand did. Uh, by the way, Ham, are not accustomed to receiving so much love. Continue to do so. Oh no. All the love must be theirs. Or I will declare a mutiny! Good luck, we have a non-centralized system of government here. So this one was in a large tank. Uh, in the center, this one had rays and the whale shark baby in it. And this had they had this manta ray that had uh, the pigment. So it's like the opposite of uh, it's the opposite of albinoism, where their pigmentation is actually super dark. Here's just another beautiful. Bray. And then this here is the whale shark. There was this guy with an excellent nose, so of course we had to take a picture. We appreciate really good noses. Uh, here's a tunnel you can be under for the whale, uh, whale shark exhibit. The whale shark has, of course, a ton of fish that follow it. And here's that ray with the, the pigmentation uh, gene I was talking about. And then this one here, you'll see a ray playing. They had this big bubble fountain in the middle. And there's this ray that swam in loops playing in the bubbles. So that was really fun to see. And then uh, there was a nice little shark tank here that had uh, a few different species of sharks. 
And of course, uh, the... Oh, they're not a sturgeon. What are they called? Barracuda. And in the aquarium, they have their own cafe, of course. They had this curry that starred the... the whale shark, but what I got was, um... Amandi got the uh, tea and it looked really cute. It's a little well shark attached to the tea bag. It looks like they're just chilling in the cup. And then I got an ube pie because, again, it was my favorite flavor. One of the rays had an excellent nose. And at the cafe, there were seating areas around that big tube that the manta rays were playing in earlier. And uh, so we got a whole bunch of great videos while we were sitting there. There is a time limit of how long you could sit there, but I think it's like 45 minutes and we only took 15 for what we were doing. But you can sit there for a very long time. You have to pay extra to sit right next to the tank. But you can, it's pretty visible from all the, all the seats. There was this guy here, stared straight at us. You're at the two hour mark? Okay. After um, after these videos, we'll wrap, we'll wrap up and go find someone to raid. Because I think these turtles are the last section. Yeah, and then it's the the garden. So we'll cover that next time we decide to come back and talk about it. Turts, yeah. So uh, my my uh, mother actually really likes turtles. So you got a couple great shots of the turtles. But uh, let's go ahead and see who's on and find someone to read. Without the PowerPoint, literally just looks like the beige hellscape that it is. I'm so happy to have you back. I miss you so much and we missed everyone. It's been a couple months and it was a struggle. Okay, who's on? Who's doing what? I need to talk to you. Yes. Definitely. I've been informed there are things I shouldn't look for <laughs> at commissions. Glares at. Yes. There are conditions. Ooh, since playing uh, Persona 3. Uh, what kind of stream do you guys want to go out to? Do you want to go out to a game, an art thing? Because I've got people doing both games and art right now. Dealer's choice? Okay. I go where Olo goes. You know, I raid Sin a lot. Let's go. Let's go to Fiatchan because um, she's doing art and her art is lovely. I should probably back uh set back up to do, yeah. But I was not missing your stream. Are you going to um how long will it take you to get set up? Because I could raid you. But if it's gonna take you a while, then 
I'll have to read someone else. So let me know. Pickles. I have to relaunch, uh, mix it up. Oops. Aw. I'm sure Olo loves it. My mic is muted. <laughs> you know, if it's going to take you that short a time, we'll just raid you. So, um, while chaos is going live, you can just sit around and talk for a bit. I do this pre-stream startup sequence with words. Yeah. Take your time. You don't get to raid chaos often. I know, but we're going to be able to do it more now that we're back in the world. Back in this part of the world, I should say. But yeah, we um, it took us a few months to get moved. We traveled over the course of like two weeks, uh, personally ourselves, and we did a stop in uh, Hawaii. We stopped in uh, Honolulu, so that was nice. And we uh, spent some time there. We went and uh, climbed the mountain there, and uh. Just did a bunch of stuff. I have to pull up my stream manager. I love you. We love you too. But uh, I'm trying to think. We also went on a glass bottom tour in Hawaii, but um, it was too dark to see because we got like one of the last showing slots and uh, we didn't get to see much. But the tour guide was wonderful. And it was a nice boat right on the ocean, so we're not salty. Bum, bum, bum. So that was uh that was fun, of course, too. And then afterwards we uh flew into where did what was our stopping point? I don't remember. We had one flight before Oh, it was in Colorado. It was in Denver. So we went from Honolulu to Denver and then Denver to where we're, we're at now. We had a three or four hour layover in Denver. Neither of us were feeling great. It was freezing. We went from Honolulu, Hawaii and Okinawa to like the middle of freaking winter. Chaos is initiating ad break. Cool. I think we should be able to write over soon then. Soon. Give it a few minutes so that we uh, miss the ads. Yep, one to three minutes. Sounds good. Did not mean to do that. I'm not morbidly horrified, like my expression led you to believe it a second ago. I gotta remap some of these keys. But yeah, the it was freaking like uh, 14 degrees when we were in Denver. So going from like 80 degrees for our, like as the regular temperature for both the places we were in down to 14 was quite the shock to our system. Um, so that was, it was not fun. And then whenever we got to where we are now, the, the weather was just a little better. It was in the forties. So 
much better, but not what we were used to at all. Of course, now summer's winding up, so it's getting hot again. So that's always good. Yeah, Ken's going to have trouble getting the commission he wants because Lily's already got some planned. <laughs> But I'm gonna enjoy doing that. I think it's gonna help me. I've had uh had a time since the move trying to get things done. You know, as you do. But now that we're back to streaming, that'll help. Because I'm a person who needs like accountability. <laughs> me and the skill. It's not that I can't get what I want, it's just that it narrows down my choices, yes. It was really funny because the thing, one of the things that uh, Lily asked me to make, I almost did for free on my own volition for your, for your birthday. Uh, so our brains were totally synced up. All right, let me see. And I got a uh, Fuji Premium, which ups the model size. Oh, nice. I saw that you redid the, uh, that you redid the, the models a bit, the sprites. Okay, I think we're good to uh, right over. Let me just double check. So Lily is going to be playing Fortnite. I got more accurate glasses and changed the eyes. I'm definitely going to be peeping at those for the next reference. I always um, keep a, a list of updated reference materials. For people I do art of frequently. Okay, we're going to go raid Lily. Before we go, you can copy this message. And if you are a USI member or donation uh, donator, you can copy the one with the personalized emotes to the channel. That's all the time we have for today. But Ola will be back tomorrow doing art with everyone. Wait, no, I'm late. I'm sorry, Waze. No. Yeah, we're just leaving, but we're going to go raid Lily. So I'm going to leave you off with someone fun. I promise. Uh, Ella will be back tomorrow doing art. Same time, same place. Uh, just in the atrium section of the apartment. Ah, uh, thanks for the bits. The bits. All right, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. So until next time, have fun, space friends. <laughs>